What is going on guys? Grave here. Welcome back to the Elder Scrolls Online. And with Greymore releasing tomorrow on console, of course it came out last week. It's been out for about a week or so on PC. There's a lot of returning players to the game and there's not a lot of new players to the game. So today I kind of wanted to make a video giving some tips to those new players. Instead of just, you know, kind of giving y'all just in general tips, just overall, I'm going to kind of give you some tips based off a lot of the questions that I have seen online from new players. A lot of these questions I see over and over, either in forums, social media, whatever the case may be. And a lot of these same things are asked by a lot of different people. So let's go ahead and start off with this. It's going to be a little bit different, like I said, than just giving you straight tips. One question that I always see is, do I need to keep everything that I pick up? If you are a new player, there is no need to keep every single piece of material and gear that you pick up before you hit level 50. I would recommend putting the best stuff that you have on your character, whatever kind of character you're trying to build, whether it be tank, you know, uh, uh, something with light gear, heavy gear, medium gear, whatever the case may be. Also, you can break down a lot of that gear and start uh, learning how to do some of your crafting stuff, you know, for blacksmithing, woodworking, clothing, or that kind of thing. But there's no need to keep everything in your bag. I know a lot of people feel like when they're new, they need to keep everything and hoard it up. You can sell a lot of this stuff because once you get to level 50, none of that stuff you picked up is going to matter. And once you go from 50 to CP 160, none of that stuff's going to matter because CP 160 is max gear score. And that is the gear that you really need to start keeping and kind of, you know, checking if you need, you know, if it's something you need or not. So there's no need to just fill your bag up, uh, you know, just all the time and worry, you know, that you're getting rid of something that you might need. If it's gear or like clothing material, uh, wood, woodworking material, a metal material, that kind of thing, you can sell a lot of that stuff. Like I said, if you have ESO Plus, that's going to be a little bit different. If you're new, we'll get into that here in just a second. But overall, you don't really have to keep that bag full all the time. You can sell a lot of that stuff. One other question that I see a lot online is, do you need all the DLC? Do I need to buy ESO Plus? Those kind of things. First of all, you do not need the, all the DLC in the game. To be able to enjoy the game. I know a lot of people are going to hop in tomorrow. Brand new to the game maybe. They see Graymore has come out. There's a lot of additions out there that give you Graymore. The base game and some other DLCs for a certain price. And a lot of people think that they're going to have to start with that. That is not necessarily the case. You can buy just the base game. Uh, which is very cheap most of the time on console and on, on PC. A lot of times on PS4 I see it for $10 to $15. The base game is going to offer you several hundred hours worth of uh, content and that way in my opinion you don't have to spend a, a big amount on the game you can buy you know the base game see if you like it if you have played for a, you know a month or so and you really enjoy it or you get in there and you play for several weeks and you really enjoy it then i would recommend maybe purchasing eso plus or dlc just separately and that's going to bring kind of up with the next question like i said along with this is do you need eso plus now eso plus is great it does give you a unlimited you know, like crafting bags, so all your crafting materials can go into it, which is really great for a lot of players. It also gives you bonuses to gold, uh, bonuses to experience gain, gives you double bank space, also gives you crowns every month, and it does give you access to the majority of the DLC in game. Now, all the small DLCs are included with ESO Plus. Uh, a few of the story DLCs, like the big chapter DLCs, so for example, Greymore. Graymore will not be included in ESO Plus for the next year, year and a half. Graymore will have to be purchased separately, but some of the older kind of big story, big chapter DLCs will be included in it. So just keep in mind, not every single DLC comes with ESO Plus, but the majority of it does. And of course, there's a few other benefits as well that I didn't mention, but overall ESO Plus is great, but I don't think you necessarily have to have it to play the game. I mean, I understand if you are a new player, uh, you only have one character, it's kind of hard to keep all this stuff, you know, keep all the inventory management. So ESO Plus does come in very handy with that crafting bag. For me personally, I've played for a really long time. I have 15 characters, so some months I just don't buy ESO Plus. I have already purchased all the DLC in-game with those free crowns from when I had ESO Plus, so I don't have to worry about, you know, if I don't have ESO Plus for a month, I can't go to certain zones or certain DLC areas. Also, all those characters I have give me access to being able to store a lot of material on some of those characters that I don't use very often. So while I, I think ESO Plus is a very good thing, I don't think it's an absolute necessity to have. I think you can manage playing without it. It takes some time and takes some kind of learning and discipline of what you can keep and what you can't keep. But overall, I don't think ESO Plus is always necessary. 
personally for me, I don't buy it for a long period of time, several months, maybe when I'm playing. And then every once in a while, I will purchase it. That way, all of the material and stuff I've picked up will go into my crafting bag. And then I have kind of free up the room on those characters to kind of start my process over again when I don't have ESO+. Plus. So just keep that in mind. It is very good. It makes the game a lot easier. It makes the game, well, I wouldn't say easier, but it does make things a lot, uh, just kind of inventory management a lot easier. And it is pretty enjoyable, too, for the, some of the stuff you get. But overall, like I said, you can really have a lot of enjoyment with the game with or without ESO+. Plus. Uh, if you make a character, can you really screw it up? A lot of people get worried that they're going to make something and screw it up, and they're going to be kind of put a lot of hours into it, and it's not going to be worth keeping. Now, when it comes to character creation, you can make your character any race and any class that you want. Now, some classes and races go better together. Some for, are for like a person that wants to make a, a character in the end that is the best it can be at a certain thing. So let's just take a sorcerer, for example. A lot of people would recommend you use a high elf because you'll be able to deal the max damage. That's not saying you couldn't make a Khajiit sorcerer or a dark elf sorcerer or a Breton sorcerer or even a Nord sorcerer or an Aragonian. Whatever you wanted to make, you can make and it is viable. But there are certain classes and races that go together that are really the ones that will stand out in the end. Now, when it comes to builds, I have a lot of builds that I mess around with myself. I don't really upload them because I don't think they're that great. But there are some really, really good content creators out there. There's tons of them. I'm going to give you a few uh, down in the description below if you'd like to check some of these guys out. Because I think they do a really good job of explaining everything. And they're very good content creators in general. And they answer questions, in their, uh, uh, of course, in their comments on their YouTube page or on their Twitch stream. So if you're looking for some really good builds, you can check out Nephis. You can check out the Asian God. You can check out uh, Alcast. And also Hack the Minotaur. He does a lot of stuff for solo builds. Those guys, like I said, are not the only content creators out there that have really good stuff. But those are some of the, my favorite to watch personally. So just to keep in mind, you cannot necessarily just screw up a character. You may not have the perfect race for your class, but that does not necessarily mean that it is totally screwed up. And if there's ever anything like skills or, or morphs of a skill that you have messed up, you always can go to a, a shrine and actually uh, change those out with gold and re-roll your character completely and you know try different skills and things. So don't feel like you're stuck with those certain skills once you unlock them, if you equip those ones and you're out of skill points to buy something else. Another question a lot of people ask is how long does it take to get to level 50 and then get from 50 to 160? I'm going to say if you're a person that only can play just a couple hours a day, you're probably going to be uh, playing for a good while to get to 50. I'm going to say a couple months to get to 50 and probably you know, another month or so to get to 160. If you're a person that gets to play a lot every day, day in and day out, you might be able to get to 160 within a month. Uh, if you're grinding day in and day out, you're probably going to be able to get there a little bit quicker. And that's going to kind of go in with the next thing. A lot of people say, should I go in and play the story or should I just go in with my friends and kind of power level my character? Now, when it comes to power leveling, you can do power leveling and get done with a character very, very quickly. I'm talking five to ten hours. Uh, but the one thing I would say to this is if you are a new player, you're missing out on a lot of skill points and missing out on a lot of experience in the game, a lot of the story of the game, which is really, really good in my opinion. So I think if it's your very first character, I would recommend just grinding it out and, and playing the story and ranking up. That way, if you want to get into making more characters later on after your first character is already 160, and then 160 plus that is, then I would recommend maybe grinding out other characters. That's what I did. I've played the story, every bit of the story with my main character. All 14 of my other characters I pretty much power leveled. But, like I said, I've already enjoyed the story with that main character of mine. And I've played everything through with it. So, just keep that in mind. I wouldn't necessarily say just grind it out, you know, by, you know, farming XP. I would say enjoy the game, enjoy the stories, enjoy the side quests, which is a lot of really good stuff. And enjoy the scenery because the game is very beautiful in my opinion. Even on console, on PC, it doesn't matter what you play on the game, is very nice to look at. Oh, one of the questions I think a lot of people are going to ask is what, you know, uh, what what is the best kind of like guild to join? I, I, was, I lost my train of thought there for a second, I'm sorry. A lot of people ask, you know, should I join a guild being a new player? And while joining a guild is a good thing, they can help you out. There's a lot of helpful people in guilds. Just be aware if you are a new player, you join guilds. Some guilds are trading guilds. Some guilds may be uh, PVE guilds or PVP guilds. So check those guilds information out before you join them in the guild finder section. Because if they are a trading guild, they're going to probably recommend that you pay a certain amount uh, per week to be a part of that guild. You know, some do per week, per month, some are donation based, whatever the case may be. But there's also a lot of guilds out there that are free that you can join. So 
I would recommend joining a guild if you are a new player. It's a good way to fast travel to areas that you don't have unlocked because you can just go into the guild roster and fast travel to certain players in certain areas, that, like I said, that you don't have open yet. Also, you can do that with your friends list just in case you did not know. You can fast travel to your friends or guild members. Also, in-game, you can fast travel from way shrine to way shrine. You'll see the way shrines that you do unlock. Just keep in mind, if you are going to fast travel and you're not by a way shrine, it will cost you gold. I hope some of these things helped you out, guys. Like I said, this was a lot of stuff I'd seen online lately that had been asked about the game in general. But anyway, if you liked it, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. If you are a subscriber, make sure you click the bell icon up in the top right corner so you know when all my videos go live. If you have a chance, share the video. It does help out the channel a lot. And be sure to check out GT Racing. They are the affiliate here on the channel, and all their information is linked down in the description. And like I said in the video, guys, all those uh, people that make those really good builds here on YouTube are also linked down in that description, so check those guys out as well. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace.